Ethan, what's your objective? What's your ultimate objective? You've done multiple like, Mission Impossible films now, but does it ever feel normal? Is it ever just like, oh yeah, Tom's just off doing another stunt again, or is it always? It's a good question, isn't it? It's a tricky one. It's for me, I think it's a balance. I remember when we were in New Zealand and Tom was doing a helicopter stunt where he was literally upside down and then he was falling out of it and we didn't know he was going to fall did we I, no i had no idea and i think we were either we were having a conversation i remember being with a double espresso standing outside having a conversation but i was so cold and beautiful and they were <laughs> you like you are cold and beautiful oh. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, isn't uh, and someone goes he's doing he's doing a stunt i remember thinking oh, okay great let us know when he's done yes but and then we looked up and then he <laughs> fell off the helicopter. And and then we went, he fell. Oh no! It's like heart palpitate. I'll palpitate. Palpitate. That's the one. It is, but it is. But funnily enough, there, it's, there's a. It's a mix of the two. So it is incredibly normal sometimes. But you wake up and think, Oh, hang on, I'm in a Mission Impossible film, mm -hmm. and then you get the sense that it's crazy and wonderful. Yeah, and obviously on the last film you had to deal with the small little matter of him breaking his ankle, and on this one you had to deal with a pandemic. So these films are always they always feel quite fluid in that. They, Christopher Quarry has spoken a lot about yeah. making stuff as it goes along. You have to grab even, moments. Yeah. That's was this more challenging as a result, or is it hard to compare? Oh, I mean, this was the most challenging one yet, wasn't it? And it was because it's the biggest, and we made it in the midst of what was happening at the time. Mm. So we were content. But then Chris always likes us to be living a kind of parallel life of of high adventure, and so when there's stress offset. We've done it. Like when we were diffusing the bomb in, in uh, I was thinking about that Fallout, the other day. And they're like, you know, it was it was like one fifteen in the morning. Everyone was tired. It was the pressure to diffuse this bomb. You live mission. We basically. live it. We live it. Yeah, it was as it's much so as true. the pressure in the in the scene. Yeah. And when Tom broke his foot, I um, I made a baby. So you, you have to grab the moments. Exactly, <laughs> of course. Yeah. And you grabbed just, it. I grabbed it. Well, somebody did. You know. And <laughs> <laughs> you. Tom, it was your first time. Vanessa, you've done this before. Did you give any words of advice about how to take on this wild ride? Because Mission Impossible films are made I very differently. I don't think I needed to with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I think we met at gun arms training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that, she was, was like head of the pack already. That was a very it? cool way to meet. Mm. It was like she's doing uh, arm training and just shooting with firearms. Mm. And um, where were we? Where were we? Like in, in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in the English countryside. Yeah, we? it was cool. cool. I don't know, there's like a big uh, rock with like uh, the beach and I don't remember where it is. I don't remember. It was cool. It was someone. like, it was uh, me, Vanessa and Rebecca we were the three of us mm. and just, you know, just having dinner and just chatting about everything and, you know, ready for the mission. Yeah, definitely. And they're always very fluid productions. Like, not that Chris makes it up on the fly, but like it's very much there's a start and then we'll see what happens and react to it. But this one, obviously you had the pandemic as well, which came into it as well. So just how challenging was that to, be on this film for so long and to not know what you're doing when and that. What did you feel bring to it? It's funny, I think it was a mixture of two things because, I mean, these guys were due to start. I was due to fly out a week later and then the day before filming, it, the virus hit Italy and everyone had to fly back from Venice to London and quarantine for three weeks, <laughs> as we were all told. And then <laughs> as those weeks went on, I think what was, it was challenging the sense of we never knew when the film would go back up, but if there's gonna be anybody that would be able to do it, it mm. was Tom. And obviously it was one of the second movies in the world that did. <clears throat> and then even though it was so difficult because we had masks and it was socially distanced and you know, this film is so huge. It's got so many crew members and the locations are massive and the travel, mm. that was challenging. But at the same time, the fact that we were shooting a film was so amazing and miraculous and felt so special. Mm. So that it was a combination of difficulty, but also intense gratitude. I think, no matter how long it took, and it did take yeah. three years. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're like, we felt so grateful to be shooting on these beautiful locations mm. all around the world and be able to travel. And um, yeah, and because we had to stay in this bubble, I, I think for me, I even trained harder with like all the, the f physical things, you know? So mm. we're like super focused too. Yeah, and Chris allows the stars to build their own characters. Like there's an outline and he's like, go for it and develop it. So for you, Pom, what did you want to bring to Paris that made her different to the kind of villains we've seen in this franchise before? I mean, I wanted to to bring like, kind of like an insanity to the character and even like the, the idea of the makeup that I wear in Venice with the, 
the white and the black uh, uh, black teardrop, you know, I wanted to bring something that was a bit eerie and strange and kind of like monster, but mm. also that kind of like looked, you know, kind of like a porcelain doll or kind of like a pantomime at first. It was inspired by by this character, Piero Lunaire, you know, in the Commedia dell'arte. Mm. And I wanted to bring something that was like a little bit melancholic, but also uh, very wild and unleashed uh, when I do the car chase. So it's all about like modulations, you know? Mm. It's like music, you know? Sometimes it's gonna be like loud and then it's gonna go to a little flute and then, you know? So it's, it was really fun to get to do that. For you, coming into this kind of fluid filming, making, then you had the pandemic on top of it, like just yeah. what, was there a particular aspect that stood out that just like so challenging or did that just keep it lively and fresh and exciting? <laughs> Uh, well, I think the way that it began put me in good stead for all the inevitable obstacles and challenges that come your way. Mm. Whether a pandemic suddenly interrupts that or whether it becomes a shifting location or a schedule change or a script change. And that beginning was really 10 years ago. Mm. Chris McQuarrie came to see me a play in the West End in London, took me out for dinner and said, I want to work with you. That mm. thing that you do on stage, I want to, I want to create a character. I just don't know what that is. Mm. And so by the time that I got to the screen test, which will be like six years later, because I'm nearly four years into this movie, um, with him and Tom, they were very transparent about going. They said, we, we, don't, we don't have a character that we want to find someone to fit into. Hmm. We choose the actors we want to work with. And part of that process is explain to the actors what this process, this unique filming process is like. Hmm. And if that actor goes, yeah, I feel like I could potentially thrive in that situation, or I love the challenge of it. And equally they're going, I think you could match that mm. and match what we want to offer you. Then we create the character together. So that had, all give, that had already, already given me a agency mm. in, in a huge machine yeah. um, that meant that I could just make choices for myself as I went along. Mm. And so it didn't feel overwhelming, but it felt like a, a like an all-encompassing, deeply fulfilling, invigorating challenge that at mm. times was like, you know, despite all the, the you know, all the, everything involved in the making of something of this scale, you, you kind of, you're, you're seeing your way through, you're seeing what yeah. the through line is. Yeah, definitely. And your character, along with Ethan, is involved in some of the biggest set pieces in this film, which obviously yeah. I won't go into spoils because the trailer really hasn't shown nope. everything at all. <laughs> um, so when you're there on set with Tom Cruise, who yeah. like notoriously does all of his own stunts and everything, do yeah. you feel like you had to up your game or are you like, you know what, Tom, you, you go and do it and then I'll just do what oh, I can? Oh, yeah, you don't, you don't come in as the leading lady opposite Tom Cruise in the Mission Impossible if you if you don't want to do your own stunts yeah. or you're like, oh, I'm gonna set this one out. Cause he'll be like, what? We, but you can do it. We, we've trained for five months, you can do it. And we had this expert team of stunt men and women who oversaw all my training. And so it meant that I was fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. So it meant that any given day, my physical uh, behavior and what I'd built up to be able to physically do was dynamic. And it was safe enough so that I could then change elements of performance and make her seem more reckless or seem more full of self-doubt, not, not sure if she was gonna get through this, but as Haley knowing mm. I, I could. Mm. And part of the reason why the fearlessness came in is because you know, Tom is so prepared and disciplined and will drill his every sort of physical move he needs to make, knowing where the obstacles are, uh, make double checking the harness, double checking that all the, you know, if that, is that something sharp I need to avoid? Where can I put my feet? And that conversation is an ongoing one throughout the day. And we never, you know, you never sort of like go, oh, you know, I'm just gonna not think about this one. I'll just jump off and see what happens. Everything is well designed and prepared so you can then let go. When you came to this film, the expectation of what you thought Mission Impossible film was gonna be like to film, did yeah. that meet the reality or was it just oh so God. different? It, 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 it met my expectations and then some. Yeah, and it was just one of the most exciting films I've ever made in my career, truly. Yeah. What do you think the big difference is? Because I always hear that Chris likes to keep things fluid. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. not necessarily the story's being made up as it goes along, but right. more about character than Yeah, story. well, that's the thing about Chris. He's a marvelous maestro at being able to make sure that the audience are emotionally involved in the characters. Mm. So that, you know, when you have an action sequence, it's not just filling time on mm. film that every moment in the film, every piece of the drama, every part of the plot and the character development is driven emotionally. Mm. And so this is, I think, one of the most most powerful Mission Impossibles ever. 
yeah. not just in terms of the scope and the stunts and everything, but just emotionally. It's mm. really, really powerful. Yeah. You've been in other fran long running franchises like Saw, right. one of my actual favorites because I'm a horror fan. Thank um, you. How, why is it you feel that this Mission Impossible series has endured for as long as it has? Because in 2026, we're coming up to 30 years of yeah. Mission Impossible films. What do you feel is the special source, as it were? Well, there's two words, Tom Cruise. Yeah. You know, I mean, the guy's a remarkable human being. I mean, let's face it, he's a, he's a brilliant actor. He's an insanely talented stuntman guy puts his life on the line for his fans every single time mm. and then some he's a great producer mm. and um, yeah I mean he's uh, this is our second movie together and working with him I'm always learning from him he's an extraordinary talent and uh, there's a reason these films are so ma magnificent and huge and it's really down to him it's of course it's Tom but it's it's to do with also Tom's Tom's curiosity in movie making and always wanting to learn and study and to develop. And whether that's looking technologically about what, what has been, what is now available to us that wasn't before, what's being invented, what's being created. Um, and also what, what do the audiences want? What is this today's audience looking for? <laughs> what are their own expectations given what they're used to seeing? Um, and he really cares about that. He is always trying to look at this work objectively, going, what's landing for the audience? So he's very good at going, I had one idea, filmed it, looked it back and just went, I, yeah. oh, it doesn't, interestingly, the camera just doesn't want that, or mm. it, doesn't, it doesn't seem to kind of come alive. And it's, 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 it's always his, his dedication and servitude to the audience, which I think has gone, this is why Mission seems to just be getting better and better. Yeah. He always talks about um, the character, it's, it's open to you, you get a say in it. So for this one, what were you most excited to explore with both Benji and with also this time around? What I explored with Benji was... <laughs> <laughs> so babies get made. Um, you go. Uh, well, you know, I, I think because we've done these films now, I've done, mm. you've done three, I've done you've five. Done five. You, you, every time you, you do a new one, you get the chance to build on what's gone before, and then you build on their experiences. And, and for Benji, who, who's gone from being a, a very sort of like wet behind the ears new boy to a, a senior member of the team, you know, he takes on board everything that happens with each successive film. So that's that's kind of why I, the way I look at it. I agree. I think I also, you know, the drill better than me, even though I've done ten years. You've done twenty-two years. Seventeen years. Is it? Mm -hmm. Seeing Tom and the Q on set and how they speak, because we don't have scripts, I can see how their brains work together. So they talk about character. You know, it's not all, we talk about action a lot. We talk about needing the stunts and then we build the story around it. But we don't talk a lot about the fact how driven Tom is to create character and reason to why mm -hmm. and emotion. And I feel like I can see it through this journey. We're not scared of getting darker and grittier. And, and that's what I feel if I talk about yours, the stress and the feeling and the anxiety and the fact that we as human beings have rights mm -hmm. and 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 values, you know, and love. He knows that if if the characters aren't in place and real and and meaningful, then none of the stunts will mean Makes anything. Sense. Yeah. Because you don't care about. It's all very well to see someone jump off a cliff on a motorbike, but if you don't care for that guy, mm. you're not worried about what his motivations are, where he's going. It doesn't mean anything, does it? Yeah. Do you think? Do you think that is part of the reason why this series, as you? alluded to it's lasted so long that we're coming up to like almost 30 years in 2026 mm. so yeah, I is think that is. part of the reason why it's endured don't jinx it. <laughs> it i think it is i think it's kind of you know that's always been their thing it, it, quietly behind the yeah. scenes whilst everyone's talking about the stunts they're really drilling down on making characters you can believe in and care about well i remember on fallout talking to you know chris and tom for hours about how they were so inspired by the tv series and that's how the idea came around you know but that they, and the, but they always wanted to remember that that was the source material. And so there's a kind of, uh, there's a history with it and there's a legacy that they're building on. So it's not kind of, oh yeah, we're taking that title and we're just spinning off and doing, you know, it's very much the same heart of it somehow. And I feel like it's totally retained the same heart. I mean, you have, what I find incredible is about it, you have Ethan Hunt, you know, who's been the center, who's been the common denominator in every single movie. And I, it's so strange to think that Vanessa Redgrave played my mother and he's, you know, he did that incredible scene with her in the car where she's really playing with him. And I watched it a thousand times to try and, you know, 
try and remotely emulate the sort of the what she did but I mean you look related it's crazy what you what you did well that's the nicest compliment ever. no but at some point I thought that they, they're like really from the same family it was like but and actually no <laughs> oh, it's, well I mean it would be just oh, a, a, a dream because she's like one of my heroes and so it was but really true I, I googled it at some point I was like our Van <laughs> just same name that's, it. that's the only way we're actually like remotely related um, but yeah that was amazing and to think that Tom has looked in the eye of Vanessa Redgrave in that car and is now looking at me as her daughter and is now looking at Pom you know who's the latest to join the franchise, but tears it up. I mean, you just tear it up. Like no one else in the franchise yet has. And I think that the the the, 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 the it's the combination of having this sort of heart and soul of the source material, and then a, and a reinvention with, you know, everything. I mean, going down the Spanish steps, and 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 Pombi, the, this villain who's just charging after them, and, <laughs> and is so fierce and fights him for the first time as well. Having a yeah, woman do that cool. is awesome. No, it's true. I think it's the first time that Tom gets to also have a fight scene with a woman in the franchise. You know, so it was like a big deal as well. How do you find him as a collaborator? Because I, I feel oh, the he's best. so collaborative. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why he and Chris get along so great. They're mm -hmm. both so collaborative, and they're very. They're very supportive of everybody. Every department head, every actor, everyone, every every member of the crew. It's all about lifting everybody up to do their best work. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I find about this. Like he does these big stunts, which obviously yeah. get all the attention. Yeah. But yeah. in the film, there's all these character moments for yeah. every single yeah. one. Yeah. Um, what are you hoping that fans get from this? Because like I landed this film and I was like, I need to see the second part now. Ah, that's <laughs> like, great. What are you hoping? Fans yeah, get from I it? think the fans are in for a treat. I mean, I. I People think I'm biased. I think it's the most intense, powerful, biggest Mission Impossible ever. I mean, I think it's frankly the best uh, action movie I've ever seen. <laughs> really, truly, it's gripping. The guy I watched it with, ne sitting next to me in the theater, he left an imprint of his fingers on the armrest. That's how excited he was. So yeah, it's powerful stuff. Yeah, yeah. you do. I found myself like, leaning in. No, it's especially great. It's, it's like a nail biter. Absolutely. I mean, it, the, the, the pace of it is insane. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing.